everybody. Sorry I couldn't be with you today. Today we're going to be talking about replication. We're going to do some Cornell notes on that. Uh, that's going to end up going on to page 87 of your interactive notebook. Let me go ahead and pull up that table of contents just so you can check and make sure. So here we go. DNA replication notes go on page 87 and later on today you're going to start working on a replication illustration so you have something to use quick nice pictures that sort of thing uh, shouldn't take you too much to fill out your table of contents it's an entire six words all right so if you need to pause we can go ahead and pause anytime just kindly ask miss Bizant and she will uh, i'm sure happily pause it for you all right we're going to move forward go back to page 87 in your notebooks uh, make sure you have your title. Copy down the same little target that we had from yesterday. And we're going to move on in just a second. So today we are going to be focusing on the copying itself part. How does DNA copy itself? So, all right. Uh, it uses a process called semi-conservative replication. It's a big fancy name. I'll explain to you what that means in just a second. But uh, as you can see, we start with uh, one double helix right here. And it's kind of splitting right here. And we're going to end up with two copies of DNA. Just like I said, starts with one double-stranded piece of DNA right here. It's going to use that DNA to make an exact copy, and that's going to be really important. We're making exact copies here. We don't want variation when we are making copies of our DNA. Uh, we're going to end up with two double-stranded pieces. Each of the new DNA molecules contains DNA from one side of the old DNA, old DNA and a new side. Um, we use this word complementary. So we have one side right here. And then its complement is just the other side. Nothing super fancy. Its complement is the other side right there. So uh, I'm going to pick a number at random, and uh, Ms. Bizant is going to give you a few minutes to go ahead and uh, talk with your neighbor, of course, about this replication. Um, then she's going to pick on you randomly, or really, I'm going to pick on you randomly, uh, and you're going to answer. You know where the board is, the big board, first, second, and fourth period. Use those numbers to decide who gets to answer this question. So talk with your neighbor real quick. Why does the body need to copy its DNA? Go ahead and pause right now. All right. Um, we have our random number generator. Here's the number right here. Let's see if I can make this bigger. Yeah, we, there we go. Uh, not super fancy, but it's going to work. Number... 27, go ahead, you get to answer. Why does the body need to copy its DNA? See if you can think of one reason. And if uh, number 27 isn't here, number 12, you win. All right, so we paused it, and we are going to go ahead and go over possible answers. See if you got it right. So one reason, we need to grow, make new cells, that sort of thing. Uh, we need to make uh, copies of our DNA before we go through mitosis or before we go through 
meiosis, all right? We talked about that S phase. We need to make copies, all right? The reason we need to make copies, we're going to be splitting these cells. So why do we need to make new DNA? Because we need, need to make new cells. Hopefully somebody got that, guessed that right. If not, now you know, go ahead, write that down. We need to make copies of DNA because we need to make copies of cells. Every cell, almost every cell, needs do new DNA. Um, there's lots of little steps. We're going to kind of make this uh, a simple, more complex than when you were in seventh grade, but more simple now. Jim, quiet, turn around. All right. Uh, first step we need to unwind the DNA. So when it's all coiled up, you can't get into our little bases. Our little bases are the special code. This order that we go in here, that's what our code comes from. So we need that to stay the same. And we need to unlock this little piece of DNA so that we can read that code and put it down. Let me erase that. There we go. So. Um, we need to unlock it and remember something that's a reaction opening up that molecule and things that make that happen are enzymes enzymes make reactions happen first faster and our enzyme is helicase you need to know that enzyme the name of that enzyme helicase it ends in the ASE so helicase unwinds the helix helix helicase you know that sort of thing maybe You'll remember it this way. Don't tell anybody this joke. But if I were an enzyme, I'd want to be enzyme helicase so I could unzip your genes. Don't be dirty. Genes. All right. It's hard to write with a mouse. All right. So the way it does that is it breaks all these hydrogen bonds right there. It helps make that happen faster. Again, we're going to pause here for a second. Um, maybe uh, you have to flip back to yesterday's notes. And what are the four nitrogenous bases that we talked about were found in DNA? All right, random number generators up. Let's pick number three. Who's number three? No, no number three here? Well, try number 16 if number three didn't get it right. Really, that's what you think. All right. I don't know what to say. I'm just waiting. All right, so our answer, uh, you have thymine, cytosine, adenine and guanine all of those are our nitrogenous bases there is another nitrogenous base um, when we talk about rna it's called uracil but we're not there yet so uh, if you had said atcg that's also okay these are what makes up our rungs of the ladder okay. we also need to pull that open we're going to use rna primers to hold it open you don't need to know that but there are all you need to know is there's enzymes and proteins that help keep this molecule unwound so that we can make a copy. So step two, we're holding this open. Um, after that, we need to attach new bases. And uh, we use uh, another enzyme, polymerase, that and adds these polymers into here as the complement. So the complement to adenine is thymine. You need to always remember that a goes with T, C goes with G. So whatever's available, if we have adenine exposed, we put thymine in. All right? We're adding the whole nucleotide. Uh, fourth step, we need to just continue adding it. And we're just going to focus on this part right here, right now. Um, we go from a five prime end to the three prime end. So five prime and three prime. Um, that just has to do with where the sugars are. Remember we have our five carbon sugar. This is 
there we go. There's a carbon right here, carbon right here, carbon here, carbon here, and carbon here. All right. So this is our third carbon, and this is our fifth carbon. All right. And if you kind of rotate that sideways, it goes on to so-and-so. Not that important. That's AP Bio stuff. Don't worry about that. But anyway, it goes in one direction. Nice and easy. Opens up, and we just easily add on all of these bases right here. Goes nice like a ladder. Just want you to worry about that right now. This is called our leading strand. So here is a little animation that's going to help you see this happen. Maybe I can blow this up. So this is our helicase, our enzyme that's going to open up the DNA. We're going to need to add some uh, primers. And if you notice, this is happening lots of different places on the DNA. Uh, this replication fork, that's where the DNA is opening from. There's our primers to help keep it open. And DNA polymerase is going to add new complementary bases to the leading strand. Adding new bases. The lagging strand happens a little differently. You'll see that a little bit later. Do it one more time. Opening up with DNA helicase. Again, happening lots of different places on one DNA molecule. Our fork is where it's opened. We use the primers to keep it open. DNA polymerase is going to lay down new nucleotides, new bases that complement. And if you notice, what makes them fit together? Their shape. This shape fits nicely into that shape. That shape fits nicely into there. All right, that was exciting. All right, here's another little one. We're going to open this up. Here we have a DNA molecule. We have two sides. It's kind of shown zoomed in, just looking at the DNA molecule. On the right, we are going to see kind of a long DNA molecule. So here we open up our replication bubble. Notice how there are many over here. These little zappy things are supposed to be uh, hydrogen bonds. We're laying down in our uh, nucleotides. And notice on one side it's going to fill nice and smoothly, and on the other side they're going to fly in kind of sideways. So this one right here goes in nice and easy. those Okazaki fragments. And here's our whole DNA strand over there. So let's go start this over. Don't forget to pay attention over here. And it will take about six hours to copy a cell's entire human DNA. All right move them forward. So those are replication bubbles. You see a replication bubble right there, this big, long, unwound strand. These are not in chromosome form. DNA gets replicated when it's loose like this, during S phase. During replication, uh, you can have errors, but they are uh, pretty uncommon. Errors are called mutations. That's just a, a change in the DNA sequence. So if it changes to what it's not supposed to be, that's a mutation. Sometimes that can be good, sometimes that can be bad. But a lot of times that's going to change the shape and we have little molecules that recognize that and fix it. Uh, here you have our proofreading enzyme and it goes through and fixes those. 
takes out the wrong one, puts in the new one. Uh, it can take out entire mismatched ones, it fixes it. So we have mechanisms to help us make sure our DNA maintains the same code. Uh, DNA polymerase is an enzyme that can proofread the DNA strand. Well, you might have said, hey, what about DNA polymerase? Uh, there's a couple ones. There's DNA polymerase 1, DNA polymerase 3. You don't need to worry about that. Just know that there are some enzymes that proofread our DNA. All right, I have another little video that is going to go through it all and kind of show the process a little bit smoother. Uh, I like how it's narrated. Uh, the image quality is not the best, but it does a good enough job. When DNA replicates, its strands are separated by the enzyme helicase. Single-stranded DNA binding proteins keep the strands from re-annealing. One DNA strand encodes the leading strand, which forms from its 5' prime to its 3' prime end, using DNA polymerase 3. No problem here, but the lagging strand presents problems. It has to form from 5' prime to 3' prime too. It forms in pieces called Okazaki fragments. First, an RNA primase lays down an RNA primer. Then, DNA polymerase 3 lays down new DNA. The process repeats again and again. DNA polymerase 1 replaces the RNA primers with DNA. Finally, DNA ligase links the Okazaki fragment. All right, so hopefully that was a little helpful. If you need to rewatch that again, just rewind the video. Um, you can go home and just type in DNA replication process into your phone, into your computer, whatever. It's right on YouTube. That's where I grabbed this from, obviously. YouTube right there. All right, so um, here's a little test. Gonna take a few minutes. You need to turn this copy of DNA. This is one side of the DNA. You need to give me the complementary side. So the side that matches up with this. So you need to know those base pairing rules. A matches with what? T matches with what? I'll give you a few minutes. Go ahead and push pause. And when you are ready to go, I'll, I'll pick a number. All right, so let's generate a number. Number 34. If there's no 34, let's try 22 or 20. All right. Go ahead and pause. Give a chance to answer. And hopefully you've got that. A and T complement each other, just like you see there. G and C complement each other, and so on. I got all that right. Yeah. True or false, replication starts at one end of the DNA and finishes at the other. Go ahead and give 30 seconds. I think that's you know, not too bad. Number 22, you are lucky. You get to go again. That didn't work, number 10. All right, there's our answer, replication bubbles. Um, it is false. We have replication bubbles. So it's going on multiple places throughout the DNA. Um, if we were not to have these replications, it would take forever, it already takes six hours. There are uh, trillions of base pairs. Uh, 
we need these replication bubbles to make it go faster. So think about what the target was, see if you can write kind of answer to that. Uh, how do we do replication? Why do we do replication? What needs to happen? Maybe what are those base pairing rules? Uh, write some questions. I gave you some questions. Um, Ms. Bizonis will go ahead and uh, pick a few numbers to give us some people to share their questions, uh, share their answers, and go ahead and share their summaries. And after you do this, you are going to go ahead and open up your textbook and open up your notebook, and we're going to uh, draw some pictures. Okay, so you should have written some nice things about your summary. Um, on page 86, you're going to draw an illustration that shows how uh, replication works, how we make a copy. Now, you could do something like this picture, but it's okay. It's not that helpful. Um, this picture is in your book on page 298. It's okay. I'd rather you see you make some sort of step-by-step -step illustration that shows things in sequence. So it goes right up with your notes. You can highlight little vocab words, that sort of thing. Uh, spend some real time on it. It's going to be helpful for you on your unit test when you get to use your notebook. While you are working on your little step-by-step -step picture of replication, uh, Jordan or Ashley or uh, Miss Bizant is going to come around and take a look at your lab. She's going to want to make sure your procedures are very well illustrated. Uh, she's going to come around and make sure you have your uh, analysis. There we go. All answered. Nice, good sentences. It makes sense. And she's going to give you a, a one to five. Uh, this person, they did everything very well. Nice, neat sentences. And uh, I missed a couple, so I give a four. If they had everything right, give a five. Check mainly for completion and time spent. Uh, I hope you liked this lab. Hope you learned a little bit from it. And uh, she'll come and record that down. Be very kind to her. Um, also, she's going to be paying attention to your participation in class during the, uh, the notes and drawing your, your illustration. She's going to be giving you a grade today on... Uh, your participation five four three two one so that's going to count as your p grade today all right and the last thing that we need to do um need to let you know what your homework is so i'm going to pull up your uh, let's see there we go pull up my website and we need to click on biology go to february what is today? Today is the 27th. Today is Wednesday. And let's make it big so everybody can see. All right, so you worked on your replication notes, you're working on your illustration, and if you don't finish that illustration, you finish it tonight at home, and you need to take notes on DNA replication, or not take notes, but you need to take the DNA replication quiz. In order to do the DNA replication quiz, you're going to go over to my quizzes, select your class, and there will be one that says DNA replication quiz. So I guess I should probably get that up there for you right now. All right, so let's uh, refresh. I added that. And I swear I added it. Let's try again. Whoops. Oh, had to change the date to today, not uh, the 27th. Let's refresh. What the heck? Okay, got it. So what you have to do, uh, if you're going to go biology, I'm sorry, go to my quizzes, Select your period. Um, it's F9 DNA replication quiz. You're going to click that, add your first name, last name, your password, your student ID number. Um, you can also work on this S2 Biology Revised. If you need to do the retake still, that's available. 
Um, it's going to be going until the last day of the semester before uh, the week before finals. All right, so you have play and do, play and study. We are going to have um, retakes. Uh, tomorrow is Thursday, so you'll be able to do retakes tomorrow. I'll be here. And so we'll do retakes uh, the 28th. You're just going to have to go in the back room and get your transcription translation notes later. Make sure you have your FART filled out. And we may have time as well on Friday. Um, that's if your substitute feels confident enough to let you do that. All right. Thank you very much, and I will uh, see you soon. Have a good day.